here to the left. Second day at Kwanzaa Girls and Boys. I, you remember I, I was a teacher. That's, I, I slipped back to Girls and Boys. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> second day at Kwanzaa is Kuja Chakalia. And that means self-determination. We are a determined people. We are going to get it right. We are moving in the right direction. We got to stay on track. So, okay. We did second day of Kwanzaa, first day of Kwanzaa, the third day of Kwanzaa, Ujima. Ujima. And that means? Collective work and responsibility. Collective work and responsibility. It means we all have a job. Whether you're unemployed or not, you still got a job. Your job is to make this a safer and better city for us to live in. No matter what you do, remember your, your purpose. And we're gonna to get to that in a second. So we got Umoja, we got Kuja Chakalia and Ujama, Ujima. Now we are going into the fourth day of Kwanzaa. Fourth day of Kwanzaa is Ujama. And Ujama is cooperative economics. Support each other and support those people that support us. Like ShopRite supported us by providing all this food for us today. So we have to be in our community. We want to be, we want to promote economic cohesion. So we are going to support each other. Okay. And then Nia. Nia. Purpose. purpose. Everybody know what their purpose is? Who doesn't know what their purpose is? Who doesn't know what your purpose is here? Okay. As long as you are contributing and doing your purpose, then this is going to be a better place to live for all of us here on earth. Things are getting better already. You know that? Yeah. Okay. The next candle we're lighting is what's the today? Creativity. We have a lot of creative people in our community that can do things to make this a a, a better place to live and a better world to live in. So um, creativity, as uh, my sister Yvonne was telling me the other day, creativity don't mean you have to have be an artist or a singer or a poet. It can be, what else did you tell me it could be? You could be a nurse, a creative nurse. You can direct a program. You could be the man. Uh, I mean, John James. <laughs> you could be politicians can be creative. Oh. You could be an author. Okay. So find out what your creativity is and then let's just do it. Okay. And then we have the final day of Kwanzaa, which is and Imani means faith. faith. Keep the faith. Don't let anything stop you from doing what it is you have to do here. And you know who said that and who's going to protect you and make sure it gets done? The creator himself, herself. <laughs> okay, so just remember that. Keep the faith. So, and, and these principles go throughout the year, not just. This Not week, just doing quantity. There for 375 days, I mean, 65 days and, and more. <laughs> just want to thank Anasa and all of the friends of James Brown, because James Brown was a powerful brother that I love so much. And I have to come back and support the James Brown. Boom, named after Absolutely. him. Absolutely. And I, I thank you so much, Anasa, you and the whole committee, because you do it well every year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Federica. And thank you to Miss Charlotte. We have some, some wonderful people uh, and that are friends at JBAR and that's on our board. 
and, and you're gonna meet them today and you're all gonna wanna become a friend. So um, check us out, check out our programs and see what we're all about. The first one of our, our guests today, um, we're going to introduce her and she brought along with her, her son for backup and support and protection, what sons are supposed to do, right? And that's uh, Yvonne Ancu. Please stand up, Yvonne Ancu. Yvonne is a North artist and she has two, at least two or three of her children are artists just like she is. So kind of to show you how Yvonne contributes or has found her purpose, we're going to do a short little show and tell interview with her. And we're going to start that right now. So if we could just pull up a couple of chairs, we will get started. And Shuli, if you will hold the mic. OK. Good afternoon, everybody. Peace to everybody. The ancestors are here. And it's nothing but love, peace, joy, and uh, creativity. Just want to get that out to you. So I'll hold the mic for you. Okay. Um, I'm gonna sit down here. Oh. Yeah, this mic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we can I use my yeah, of course. We uh is this on? Can you hear me? We talked about creativity. Uh Yvonne and I had a little conversation about it last week, I think. And uh, one of the things that I mentioned to her is that when I was growing up here in North, and I was born here, second generation born here in this city. When I was growing up in the 50s and the 60s, I know that's a long time ago to some of you, but it really wasn't that long. But I used to go into my friend's houses and go places. And we, I discovered that there were no pictures of black people around. Now, Yvonne has told me since there were, but we didn't have access to them. So when I would go into my friend's house, they never had artwork on their walls unless maybe it was some flowers or uh, some other kind of landscape. Um, never any black faces. When I went to school and we got tech books to read, no black children, you know. Jane and all of them and Spot, everybody was not black. Nobody was black. So we didn't have black faces around and we didn't have them. We didn't go around with t-shirts of black people on them. No Bob Marley's, none of that kind of stuff. But that started to change in the seventies. And in the seventies, we started being able to go into stores even like Kohl's or, or Macy's and find some black art. I remember the first time I found a piece of black art and, and I bought it and hung it on my wall and everybody's, where did you get that? So we are going to talk to Yvonne because she was part of that movement back in the back 70s. Then. Back then. <laughs> back then, okay, no dates. No, it's fine. She, she was one, one of those people that started it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk to her and her son for a few minutes okay, about creativity. And uh, I'm gonna ask them a couple of questions. One of the questions I wanna ask Yvonne is, how old were you uh, when you discovered you had a talent? And, and uh, how did you get started using that talent? Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for coming. Um, I actually am from, um, a family of artists. So when I was a very, very young child, probably four or five, you know, art was something that was natural to me. You know, you breathe in, you breathe out, you pick up a pencil, you pick up a crayon, you pick up a, a, a whatever, and um, you create art. So it's natural to me. And um, so I was about three or four years old watching my mother who was an artist and my father who was an artist. So, you know, I, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> so that's how young I was when I started. And um, 
It's the same thing, I believe, with my son, Suleiman. Um, he was about three or four years old. And um, it was a, he had a natural gift. And he always had a gift to express a spiritual aspect of life. You know, he, he, he's a visionary. And so he was very young uh, when he started doing his art as well. So, Suleiman? Um, definitely she's right, you know, about that. It was a very young age. Um, I remember uh, probably preschool um, doing my stick figures looked a little different than others at times. Um, but being around a family of artists, creatives, uh, musicians, carpenters, uh, you name it. And definitely my mother looking at her doing what she did there was no way that I couldn't receive that energy. So it was definitely there early. And I'm happy now that I'm able to continue to uh, do the art that I do alongside with my mother. And not only, not only does um, Yvonne paint, I know her son paints too. I've seen, I've been to the exhibits and they do wonderful work. But Yvonne makes jewelry. Look at the earrings she has on. She probably made them. And she paints clothes, like jackets. Stand up. Did you do this? Yeah. Show it, show, show it, show it. Yvonne does clothes and jewelry and pocketbooks and anything else that you can imagine. So we're gonna we're gonna give her some support and let her know how much we love her art. Uh, during the North Art Festival, I am so impressed with this family. I mean, they do such great things for our community and make it such a much better place to live in and to be in. So tell us about some of your artwork. Show, it, it's what's this up here that you have out on display? Uh, we just bought a few pieces. I have to also mention that um, my second oldest son is also an artist. And we have an art collective called Three the Art Way myself and my two sons. And uh, we create uh, fine art, we do graphic art, we publish comic books and coloring books and we do murals. So we're kind of all over the place, but we're having fun and we're expressing ourselves. So what we have today, um, if you look over there, we just bought a few prints, uh, one each of our creations, the one on the far, Left is mine. All this is digital art that you see here. Uh, the far left is mine, the middle is Suleiman's, and then the one on the on the right is Samad's, my, my other son. So, and those are all those those are available. You can get them on our website. Uh, they come in any size you want. And then we have um, I'll go over here. I'm gonna get up. No, no, it's fine. Here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we do mixed media art. Now this is mixed media art because it's not just paint. It's not a flat uh, two dimensional surface, surface. So this is a mixed media piece that I did to, um, I was always fascinated by the women in South Africa, the, the Indebelli women. And what they do is they, they paint the outside of their homes with these beautiful geometric shapes. Uh, all of their homes, if you go on, um, um, Google, Google Indebelli women. They're, they're just phenomenal. Yeah. So uh, this is an Indebelli woman, and this is my tribute you know, to, to their art. Uh, I'm gonna step, because I'm gonna let Suleiman talk about his. This is a piece that I did. This is also mixed media, but this is a two dimensional mixed media. This is all paper. So, you know, we take paper, we make, it's called a collage, and we make collages. And then this actually is a tribute to my daughter, Akiba, who's our curator. So, you know, this is a family affair. Um, and uh, this piece is, is a, a mixed media collage. You can clap it up for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, me, bye. Listen, I, I say that because she goes and steps far beyond, all right? I might do three-dimensional stuff here and there, but when, she, when it comes to the mixed media, and every time she does work, 
She goes into the very fabric, the soul, the essence of it. There's a lot of research. So it's not just one thing. She goes above and beyond. So if you get an art piece from Yvonne Anque, you're getting a part of art history, our heritage, our legacy. So I just want to point that out. And, you know, I'm honored to be in your presence. <laughs> um, as far as the two pieces that I have here, the first one um, that I did here was actually was like sort of like a collaboration for myself and uh, Amira Shabazz Balau. She's a phenomenal poet, photographer, and family member, you know. And she had a pho photograph, and I actually painted the likeness of the photograph that she took. So that's what's this, this piece here. Um, the name of it, is, I think it was Queen Stair. That's the name of it, Queen Stair. Um, done in 2019. This piece right here was done in 2020 during the height of the pandemic and everybody was going through it and locked in. And at this time, the date was, actually Halloween. And I was going through some uh, physical ailments at the time. And um, I actually painted my way through. I was feeling drained. I was literally on the floor, had to fight my way. And at the end of the day, this is what came out of that negative situation. I gave myself art therapy. This piece right here, when I was done, I asked my youngest daughter, uh, Cameron, to name it. She gave me one name at first. Then she said, no, person of color. And my mind was blown. Like I'm like, what? Because all of this is colorful. And he looks like a person of color. So that was a piece that's near and dear to my heart. Um, and I want to make sure I shared it with everybody because having a smile going into the new year, you know, a lot of people could be going through something, but we can get through and we can transmute the negative into a positive energy. Thank you. Oh. Um, the jacket that I have on, my mother said, I got to listen to my mom. She said, talk about the jacket. <laughs> so this is a Marco Hall and Suleiman Ankwe collaboration. We had something we came up together collaborating called Slim Marco. And um, where I would get a fabric, piece of fabric, or he'll get a piece of fab fabric, and I would spray paint it and paint it all up, get it to him, and he'll make it into what you see here, any type of thing and any type of design. But the thing about this piece here, he didn't measure me for this. The day. I said, listen, you don't want me to take it? No, I got it. I got it. And then I came and got it from him like the day of our uh, opening reception for North Arts Festival. And I was like, wow, you know, with this fit. So occasionally you will see me wear this at important events. So, yeah, that's what I want. And, and I know she and her family have done tremendous things and they she was telling me about a project that they, they're getting started on now, but she wanted me to ask her how her talent has impacted on her personal life and her family. Well, obviously the family aspect of it is, is you know, shines through. Um, it, the experience that we, go through sharing art, not only with ourselves, but with our children, because now they're doing art. Um, it's just um, uplifting. And what it does is um, it validates us to one another because we complement each other. We are, we're each other's, uh, you know, uh, critics, yeah, but, kind of soft, you know, <laughs> you could do it like this, but you know, <laughs> that, that kind of thing. Uh, and, um, but basically the impact is that it had, it had definitely created the emoja in our family, the unity. We have uh, 
you know, a common ground that we all, you know, kind of evolve around. And, you know, when one does something and, and we encourage and, and we compliment, so it's just a wonderful thing. And like what Anasa was saying earlier about the fact that that does not, it's not limited to artists. Whatever you do as families, whatever you do, encourage one another. Please do that. Encourage one another, inspire one another. Um, what else? Um, you know, uh, support one another, you know, in the times when, you know, you're feeling bad and you need that support and you need somebody to uplift you. Uh, but find a common ground, find something that motivates, can motivate all of you at the same time, because it's important. And you have it. You came here as a family. You had this, this contract before you came here that, that you were going to be her daughter and he was going to be my son. You, you knew that. So you have something in common that you can share. And when once you share it, treasure it. Please treasure it because that's going to keep you motivated. It's going to keep you um, together in the bad times. You know, it's something that you can hold up and, and keep looking at when, when the floor falls out, but I, you know, you got to get back up. So, you know, that's how it's impact my family. And you can also, that can also transcend into the community because we have, we have soul groups, we call them. I'm looking back there and Janice Anderson is back there. She's part of our soul group. We love her. She's a doll maker and she uh, exhibits with us every year, every year. So, and she impacts her family that way. We have other people that exhibit with us and they bring their family. And so we not only have our nucleus family, we have our community, you know, that, that we work together and, and we inspire each other and we encourage each other. So that's how art has impacted us as a family and as a community. And ha hasn't your family ventured out on a new venture that you were telling me about? Um, what was that? Are you starting a new project or a new um, well, we're, business? Or well, yeah, we're expanding our business into offering um, art therapy. It's going to be a service where we're going to do workshops, uh, particularly with children. Uh, we want to reach out to, and we can speak with you, I mean, about your clientele, uh, you know, the, if we can uh, work together with you on that. But we want to offer art as therapy. So we're, we're in the, you know, we have to do our research. And um, we also have to make sure that the services are effective. So we have, you know, so that's, that's what we can do. So the OnQ family has found their purpose and they are working it and setting an example of what we can do. Find your purpose to make this a better place. Okay. Um, thank you for give, give them oh, one other question she had here. And how do you think art uplifts our community? Well, I think we've gone over that, but okay. um, one thing I, I do want to say is that art itself is um, a reflection of who we are as a people. You know, each of us as artists expresses an aspect of our experience, whether it's historical, whether it's personal, you know, we are um, channeling that, that experience through our art. And what I will say is that um, it's important to support local artists. It's very important to support local artists. And a lot of us say, well, I can't afford it. The prices are too high. But there's ways around that. There's definitely, you can buy prints. Um, you can go on layaway plans. Um, uh, you can also, um, uh, uh, it was something else I was getting ready to say. But there are ways, and you can also make donations to art, local artists. If you have someone who's uh, uh, an aspiring artist and they're struggling to get materials and whatnot, make a donation to that artist, you know, because. Um, the artists, is, their work is, is going to 
continue or, or last beyond lifetimes. You know, uh, where it, is your artwork on exhibit now, anywhere? Uh, not right. Well, yeah, we're yes. in several places. We're at the Prudential Center. That's the Prudential Center. Prudential Building. Um, we actually um, just had an exhibit out in uh, Orange at uh, Zill Creative Studios. That's on, um, I think that's 755 Freeman uh, Avenue in Orange. And that was a very powerful exhibit that we have. And you have three pieces there. Um, and it was uh, called um, Revelations of Earth, curated by uh, Kwame uh, J. Golden Art and Regine and uh, the, the daughter of Eric uh, Lewis. Uh, he's a phenomenal artist as well. He passed away, but he definitely has artwork there. Um, some of his artwork may be for sale, but there's a lot of work there. And you can also find us, we have an exhibit coming up in um, February that will be in uh, East Orange City Hall. So look out for that. You can also find us on 3theartway.com. That's the number three, T-H-E-A-R-T-W-A-Y.com. And it'll let you know all about what we got going on. And um, yeah, we got a lot of stuff cooking and we want to make sure you're in the kitchen with us. <laughs> Okay. Federica just told me that um, some of your artwork is on display uh, at the airport. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could recognize their work now when I'm, yes. I, I don't know if it was at the airport, but at the airport, yeah. Yeah, the, they, the, the um, um, Terminal A, the new Terminal A uh, commissioned about 27 artists to uh, exhibit their work there. And I have the honor of being one of the artists that was chosen to exhibit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can pick it out, you can pick it out. Mm -hmm. I can, yes, yeah. Okay, so that's kind of gonna wrap us up now. We have um, the on cues that will be available here throughout the rest of uh, our, our time here at the library today. And if you want to ask them any questions or how you can purchase any of their art, you have an opportunity. Okay. On Quay. On Quay. What did I, what was that? On Q. But we, uh, you know the funny thing about that, we, we were using that on Q for our comic books because we couldn't use On Quay. So we had to use On Q. But you know, on point, on time, and on cue, that was what we used for our comic books. But for on quay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, All right, so now, and if you have any questions, you can you can ask them. And if you want to know where their artwork is available, uh, accessible, and all of those things, feel free to ask them. We Thank you so much. Oh, go on, I'm sorry. We, but we had a spoken word artist for you today. Fajia, did Fajia come? Did she get here? No, don't see Fajia. So we're going to go right into our musical talent, someone that I have known since he was in the womb, and now he is a performing artist, Mr. Victor Days. Ibn Victor Days, I knew him as Ibn. <laughs> Ibn and his group, they had, well, I know Ibn has been all over the world singing his music, but the kind of songs that we selected for him to sing today are songs that, and he's going to do maybe even some of his own work, but he's going to sing some songs by famous artists who have used their uh, vocal skills their musical skills to say things to promote positivity in our community. So Victor, it's up to you now. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Mahat. Uh, we're just gonna take a few minutes just to get set up there, please. Get our sounds better.
make sure that you guys can hear us. And uh, while we're setting up, please do uh, follow me on social media. Um, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on YouTube, I'm on all those different platforms. Uh, Victor Davis, Victor D A C. I'll tell you guys again after uh, I finish. As Dr. Mayette said, the song selections that I'm going to be performing today are all very poignant and very related to the topic at hand today. Um, you will hear uh, music by artists such as Stevie Wonder, such as Teddy Pendergrass, Marvin Gaye. Um, I'd like you all to participate. I know we all have a voice. So if there's something that you know, if there's a line that you know, please, please sing it out. Technical difficulties. No, no, there's no technical difficulties. We got this. Then I'm done. Walk out here just to make sure I can hear them and hear the playing with you guys.
Thank you so much. And um, the message behind that song, I looked it up today, and I know this, and we all know this. It was a call to action, to wake up, to engage, to change, you know? Um, and again, the whole theme of Kuumba today, creativity, it's, it's not just, like, like she said, not just about artists, not just about music, it's about having that thought in your mind. We are all creators. We all have that thought in our mind that we then bring into fruition to make the day a better day, to make the world a better place. So now I'd like to uh, pay homage to Stevie. Just loves and needs. 
loves in me. No, I can't. No, no. Loves in me. One more time. We got this. We got this. Loves in me. You guys sound beautiful. Down. Loves in me. Now go up. Loves in me. Okay. Loves in me. Keep going. Y'all. Keep going. Y'all. Keep going. Thank you. 
When I used to wake up and die, I sent you a message, a blessing on. I remember how a smile and I swore, feeling so deep was born. Love shook me to the core. Heart of gold, where do I begin? Touch of melanin with the shade, but a baby, what a win. A soul so deep, I could die within. A hundred butterflies when I hear your name. Sweet nothing's in my ear in the love of rain. Trust me with your heart, and I'll do the same. You light up my days, cause baby, we're all in the speed of love. Reach your lights beyond the above. Show me your truth, show me your heart. To infinity, no, we won't part. Baby, we're up in the speed of love. Reach your heart, love you above. Show me your truth. Show me your heart. To infinity, back to the start. You guys have been an amazing audience. Thank you for singing with me. Once again, check me out on all the social platforms, Victor D-A-Z-E. I look forward to seeing y'all again in 2023. They were terrific, great. Victor, who I've known since he was in the womb, first time I heard him sing, though, I mean, shocked me. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, for jaw, for jaw, keg lady, she show. No, for jaw. Okay, folks, so mingle, get something to eat, uh, help yourselves, and let's give Victor another round of applause. And let's give the on quays. Another round of applause. Okay. 
we got time, so get something to eat, mango. Maybe our spoken word artist will show up. <laughs> Oh. Take a 10 minute break and then we're going to have our, another spoken word artist say a few words to you. <laughs> And maybe Victor will come back to us too. We got time. You know, it's funny. I uh, I had the I had the laptop. Sure. Shut it down. Or what? Let him speak now to the spoken word. I mean, everybody's up now. So. Yeah, it's going to be hard. <laughs> it was planned. She was supposed to be here. Yeah, I'm not gonna be, I'm gonna be. Let me see. What's your name? And I'm supposed to do they probably Bill Irene. Bill Gray? Yeah. I okay. have Oh, there she is in the green with the gray hair. That's how you know. Okay. Oh, right here. I was supposed to do something for somebody. What was the problem? Uh, 